In this video, we'll be looking at three different scenarios to better understand the routing process. Packet transfers are within a local network, routing by a single router, and the routing in the multi-router setup. Skip to the desired timestamp if you already know some stuff. I'm also assuming you have somewhat understanding of the fundamentals, such as IP address, MAC addresses. If you don't, please watch this video first. Before we start, you should know a few things. First, if a device on the network doesn't know the MAC address of any device, it send out an R broadcast to find out the MAC address. Second, each device on the network has its own R cache, which stores the IP address of the device with the corresponding MAC address. Third, switch is a layer 2 device, which forward the packet based on the MAC address, not the IP address. And finally, router is a layer 3 device, which forward the packet based on the IP address, but it can also perform layer 2 functionality as well. Let's build our network first. We take a switch and connect to PC today. Let's assign them an IP from the 192.168.1.0 network. PCA has an IP of 192.168.1.10 and PCB has an IP of 192.168.1.20. Our router is connected to the switch. Here, router is the default gateway for our network, which means any packet that is meant to be sent outside the network has to be sent through the default gateway. And the IP address of default gateway is set as 192.168.1.1. Well, it's not compulsory, but it's common practice to assign the first usable IP address of network to the default gateway. At this point, our local network is complete. And how would a packet be transferred if a PC1 tries to ping PC2 for the first time? Let's go step by step. Since PCA is trying to ping the PCB, it already knows its IP address. However, it doesn't know about the MAC address. So it first looks up the MAC address of the PCB in the ARP cache. If there is no record, the PCA send out an ARP request. Switch has its own MAC table, and when it receives the ARP packet from the PC1, first it adds a MAC address of the PCA in its own MAC table. And after that, it checks where the packet should be sent, and when it sees the ARP packet with the destination MAC of all Fs, it knows the packet is a broadcast packet, and it send out the ARP broadcast to all of the nodes. Other devices ignore the packet as it is not meant for them. Only PCB replies with its MAC address. Switch, when it gets the packet, adds an entry for the PCB MAC address as well and forward the IP response to the PC1. Now PC1 has an address and it can send a packet for the PCB. The switch sees the destination MAC address and corresponds it with its own MAC table. It sees an entry and associates it port and it forwards the packet to that port. And this is how a packet is transferred in a local network. Take a note of how RP is utilized in order to find the MAC address. Do not forget this. So far, you should know about these things. For the second scenario, let's add a new network to the router. The router's interface is the gateway for each of these networks. Now remember these two things. First, each router's interface has its own unique MAC address. And second, a PC can determine if an IP belongs to the same network or not. To find out, we should look at the subnet marks. And subnet marks has two parts, network portion and the host portion. And if the network portion of the IP address is different for the IPs, they belong to the different network. Now let's assume PCA wants to send a packet for the PCD. Using the subnet marks, PCA knows that the PCD is out of this network. So it tailors a packet for this default gateway with a destination MAC address kept as the default gateway's MAC. If PCA didn't know the MAC address of the default gateway, it can send out an ARP request as we saw in the previous scenario. PCA sends a packet for the default gateway. Upon receiving the packet, router checks the entry of destination IP in its routing table. It finds out that this IP belongs to the 172.16.10.0 network and it is directly connected to it, so it can send it directly. However, router doesn't know the PCD's MAC address, so it sends out an ARP request to discover the address. PCD replies and the router adds an address to the packet and forward it to the switch. Switch upon seeing the destination MAC address, checks its own MAC table and finds an entry. It then forwards the packet to the PCD. For the third scenario, each of the network has their own router and all of this router is connected to the center router. At this point, you should understand how the routes work. If you don't, here's the quick summary. There are three types of route, static, dynamic, and default. Default route is the last option route, which means if a router doesn't know where the packet should be forwarded, it will send that packet to the default route. 
So we can configure a default route in this network router such that if a router receives any packet that it doesn't know where to send, it can forward them to the central router. In a way, the central router works as a default gateway for these network routers. And since our network router depends entirely upon the central router, the central router has to know about every subnetwork. And to let the central router know about every subnetwork, we have to add routes for them. For the first network, we can configure such as any packet for the network 192.168.100 with a subnet mask of slash 24 should be forwarded to this interface. Similarly, for the second network, we can configure such as any packet for the network 172.16.20.0 with a subnet mask of slash 24 should be forwarded to the, this interface. And so on goes for the other networks. These are the commands. Notice we don't need to add route for the smaller networks since it is directly connected to the central router and it already knows about them. Remember, the goal of adding route is to let the router know where the network is and the router already knows about every directly connected network so we don't have to add a route for them. Now the configuration is complete. Now let's see how a packet is routed in such networks. Let's assume PCA wants to send a packet for the PC ads. Using a subnet mask, PCA means that the destination IB is out of this network. So a packet is sent to the default gateway. Router checks the routing table and since no other route matches the destination IP, packets should be sent to the default route. So the router updates the destination MAC with the next top MAC address, which is our central router, and forward that packet. The central router checks the routing table and it knows the destination IP is on this interface and it forwards that packet to the network router. The network router checks the routing table and finds out the destination IP is a part of a directly connected network, so it checks its app cache for the MAC address and it forwards the packet to the switch. Switch then forward it to the PC. And this is how a packet is routed in a multi-router setup. Notice a few things. Router doesn't always have an idea of a way to forward the packet. It sometimes relies entirely on the other routers, in this case our center router. Second, the distribution MAC address of the packet keeps changing at each hop. It is updated to the next hop address. So this is all for this video. In the next video, we're going to learn about different types of protocol, especially focusing on the computer exams. Meanwhile, subscribe and comment. I'll see you in the next session.